Today we're going to be taking a look at the 127 millimeter SMG. This is our last submachine gun to go over in Fallout New Vegas, and this one is arguably the most powerful of the submachine guns. It's also probably going to be the very last submachine gun that you get, since this one is quite rare to find. There are a couple enemies that can have this, like Hit Squads can have this, the White Legs can have this, and Zion, and I believe sometimes the Marked Men can have the 127 millimeter submachine gun. So high level enemies, at least once you actually get high level, you do need to be like level 30 or so. And there are a couple Couple locations where you can find this. One of them is very far north in the cave with the Night Stalkers that you get from Red Lucy's quest. The name escapes me at the moment, but it's one of those and you can find this in a locked area. You can also find some other really strong weapons in that same cave. You can find like a hunting revolver and you can find a hunting shotgun in there. So if you want to run there early and take on the Night Stalkers, you absolutely can do that. Or if you just want to run through and grab everything, you can also do that. For the stats of the 12.7mm submachine gun, this one requires 100 guns in order to wield and 6 strength to wield it effectively as well. So very high guns requirement. Pretty high strength requirement for a submachine gun. Although most of the submachine guns sit around this area, I think the only one that's higher is the Tommy gun, which kind of makes sense. But you're probably going to have that by the time you're getting these weapons anyway, or considering these weapons, assuming that you're running a primarily guns build. This one does 36 damage per shot, which is very high for a submachine gun. 324 damage per second, which is extremely high for a submachine gun. That can go even higher with different damaging perks. Something like Bloody Mess could help you out with even more damage on top of this. There is no perk specifically for the 12.7mm submachine gun, similar to the Tommy gun like Grunt, but even so, that's still really high damage and really high damage per second. This one does 36 crit damage, same as its regular damage. Has a low crit chance like most of the automatic weapons at 0.08. Although that is higher than some of the other submachine guns, which is usually 0 0.06, so slightly higher chance to hit crits. That's pretty cool, I guess. Costs 24 action points using VATS, meaning that it's fairly low for a submachine gun in VATS. This has two spreads, so fairly wide, but kind of what you would expect from an automatic weapon like this. Holds 21 rounds in it, so a fairly small magazine, at least by submachine gun standards. All the other submachine guns can hold more shots than this. This can be extended with a mod, which does help it out a little bit. This weighs 5 weight in total, so not too heavy, and it has 500 item health, which is perfectly fine. That's not the most amount of item health out of the submachine guns, but you may not even go through health that quickly with this because the DPS is fairly high. For the pros of the 12.7 millimeter submachine gun, this one does have really high damage and really high damage per second. That is really nice for this particular submachine gun. It has really good action point cost as well, so that's pretty good. And the 12.7 millimeter round is fairly good against most enemies. For the major cons of the 12.7, there's only really like two of them. One is that this weapon is fairly rare. There's not a whole lot of places that you can get it, and you're probably gonna have to buy it, but if you have enough caps, that's not really gonna be that much of a con. And the other con is that it doesn't really have much ammo variety. The 12.7 millimeter only gets three different types of ammo. They're pretty good types of ammo, but it does only have those three. It doesn't have any sort of like armor piercing rounds, which would make it better against uh, bigger enemies like Death Claws. That's not to say this can't take out Death Claws, because it absolutely can. It's just that it doesn't have the armor piercing capabilities like some other weapons do, so it may struggle against more tanky enemies that have thicker armor. Like I said earlier, there isn't really any perks in particular that help out the 12.7mm submachine gun. There's no grunt, there's no cowboy, there's nothing like that, so basic damage perks and basic quality of life perks really help with the 12.7mm on really any build. Packrat can kind of help you out on the hardcore difficulty since it will make it so you can carry more rounds for the 12.7. They're not super heavy, but you can carry more then. And Vats perks can also help out with this if you want to go with a Vats build. So Math Wrath or Action Boy and Action Girl can really help out here too. If you just want to be using this more in Vats, that can also be pretty nice. For the different ammos, we have three in total and only three for the 12.7mm. You have the standard 127 which just give you regular damage, regular damage threshold, all the things that you would kind of expect from most of the normal rounds. These ones would be the best to use against armored enemies, and they're probably going to be the most common rounds that you find. You can actually buy a lot of these from like the Great Con vendor. Sometimes the Gunrunners can sell a decent amount of these. Some other vendors can sell these as well, but I find that the Great Cons tend to have the most of them, so usually I just reset if I need more 12.7 millimeter from them. Just wait like three days and you'll be able to get more. But then you also have the hollow point rounds, good against soft targets, bad against heavy armor. Just like all the hollow point rounds, you get more damage, but enemies get more armor. So it could be worse in certain situations, could be better in others. Really good against Cazadors. And then you have the unique rounds that you can make, which are the jacketed hollow points. These ones are basically the same as the 9mm jacketed hollow points. You get these from the perk hand loader, and then you can make these at a reloading bench where these ones give you more damage, but they also give the enemy more armor. Not nearly as much as hollow points, which is three times the amount of armor. This only gives two times the amount of armor. It doesn't give you the 75% more damage though, like regular hollow points. This one only gives you 65. 
but that's still quite high and these are going to be much easier to make because you can just make them from the standard rounds. So if you have an excess amount of them, you can make them into this and that's usually what I do for the submachine gun and most of the time I'll just be using this against enemies that aren't the tankiest, but again, if you want to be using these like against death claws and against rat scorpions, you absolutely can. You can be pretty strong against most enemies, maybe really heavy armored enemies like the Brotherhood this wouldn't be the best against but that's not a real common enemy type anyway in the Mojave. So even then the 12.7 still shines pretty well. For an overall rating for the 12.7mm submachine gun, I see no reason not to put this up into S tier. It's a pretty good submachine gun. It has really high damage per second. It does basically everything that you'd want for a submachine gun. Works really well at close range. Works really well against soft body targets. Doesn't do the best against armored targets, but it's it's really solid. There is a modified version of this that you can also get, since there is a Gunrunner's Arsenal version of this, and you do need to have that if you want to put mods on it. Just like all the versions of the Gunrunner's Arsenal weapons, this doesn't actually change the base stats of the weapon whatsoever. It just makes it so that it can't accept mods for the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC. And this gets three mods. You can have a laser sight. This decreases the amount of spread that you have. So you go from two spread to 1.6 spread. That's pretty good. That makes it more accurate. And it's one of the more accurate submachine guns then. You can have the stacked magazines. Stacked magazines increase your overall ammunition from 21 rounds to 27 rounds. Still kind of a weird amount of ammo that this one holds, but that is better. And it makes it closer to the more standard like 30 rounds that most of the submachine guns have, like the 10 millimeter and the nine millimeter and uh, the 45. Still always going to have the least amount of ammo overall, but it does help a little bit. And I would say that's probably the biggest buff to this. And then the very last upgrade that you can get is a suppressor, which silences the weapon. So it makes it easier to sneak around and use this. That's pretty strong, but this doesn't necessarily increase the 12.7 millimeter that much more. I mean, I would say the 12.7 millimeter is already an S tier. So the modified version would just go a little bit higher into S tier. It's all around just a little bit better. And I do like the aesthetic of it more, and I do like the sound of it more when it is fully modded, even though this gun does look very strange since it's like a combination of a Vector and a P90 and it's just kind of weird, but I don't really hate it. At least it looks like something that could potentially function in the world. So would I recommend the 12.7 mm SMG? Sure, it's pretty strong. It works pretty well. So long as you like the round and you're not fighting super heavily armored enemies with like the hollow point rounds, you should be pretty good. Tell me your thoughts on the 4.7 mm down in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.